Epstein memes are dead. Snowden didn't kill himself. Assange didn't kill himself. Fieldman didn't kill himself. Manning didn't kill himself. Let's get a head start on these. Haven't seen much news about the French protests on your TV? Well, the corporate controlled mainstream media wouldn't want you getting any ideas on how to remove a corrupt government now, would they? And of course, let's not forget that the, the, the honest, honourable government have put a D notice to all the uh, news outlets saying don't don't report on it because it makes might give them ideas and they might actually come and hang us from the nearest lamppost. Maybe that's just what needs happening. Better out than in. Hillary Clinton sent you a suicide request. Two mutual friends. I got these medals for rape of children. Man drops dead in job centre queue after being declared fit to work. This is at the very least manslaughter. Whoever declared him fit for work wants to be facing criminal charges for manslaughter. Monday 18th of November this was. A man collapsed while waiting for an appointment in a job centre in South Wales. The man, 65, was found slumped in his chair at 9.30am on Friday in Lanelli. He was waiting for an appointment to discuss job seekers allowance after being declared fit for work earlier this year. Staff and customers rushed to help the man but they were unable to get a response so lay him on the floor. They started CPR and an ambulance was called while the job centre was evacuated because they didn't want anyone witnessing the absolute murder by the job centre staff. But paramedics declared him dead at the scene. And when he said, I, don't, I didn't know him myself, but the man who was sat next to me told me that he had grown up with this guy. Another case of murder by the state. I was at Pizza Express in Woking in 1996, insists Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton claims he could not have had sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky because he was at a Pizza Express in Woking at the time. The former US president distinctly remembers tucking into a family-sized pizza with wife Hillary and daughter Chelsea on January 11th, 1996. I could not have had sexual relationships with that woman, Mr Clinton said in an extraordinary interview last night. I, I was at Pizza Express in Woking. I remember it well because I... Uh, spilt some mayonnaise down Hillary's d blue dress. The food was fit for the, uh, uh, a prince. It was as good. I was there on many occasions between 95 and 97. Former working Pizza Express waitress Lorraine Fisher, 34, said the Pizza Express branch was strangely popular with famous guests who enjoyed tucking into the restaurant's uh, famous Alibi, uh, Alibi Pizza. We've had a few well-known faces through the door, she said. Lord Lucan popped in on November 8th, 1974. Mr Clinton was prompted to remember his hu hungry trip to Sur Sur Surrey in 96 after Prince Andrew last night claimed he was co could not have had sex with that the teenage Vi Vi Virginia Giuffe because he was in Pizza Express in Woking with his daughter at the time in 2001. A car crash interview gave the Queen the idea to ask the Duke of Edinburgh to take Prince Andrew for a drive. <clears throat> Not immune to prosecution as pressure mounts on Royal to speak to FBI. Prince Andrew could be extradited to America over his links with Jeffrey Epstein and allegations he slept with a 17-year-old sex slave, US lawyers have said. Never, ever, ever gonna happen. 
The Duke of York is facing growing pressure to speak to American authorities following a televised interview in which he sought to set the record straight or bend it to his way of thinking over his friendship with, with Epstein. Criminal lawyer Anna Rothwell from the firm Corker Binning said the FBI were investigating the disgraced financier who killed himself, <laughs> no he didn't, in August while being held on federal sex trafficking charges. She, t she told the Times that anyone connected to Epstein was vulnerable to extradition, including the Queen's son. Bullshit. Now, it's getting very easy to, pop to spot who the paedophiles are these days because they're coming out and letting us know. Thank you. Outrage as Lady Colin Campbell claims soliciting sex from minors is not the same as paedophilia in Good Morning Britain interview on Prince Andrew. The socialite, 70, made the comments on GMB while discussing Prince Andrew. She argued with host Piers, Mo Piers Morgan over Andrew's friendship with Jeffrey Epstein. She said there was a difference between hiring sex from a minor and paedophilia. Lady Colin Campbell, which we can now know must be a paedophile, has caused outrage after claiming soliciting sex from minors is not the same as paedophilia. The, the socialite 70 made the comments on Good Morning Britain while discussing Prince Andrew and his friendship with the paedophile billionaire Jeffrey Epstein. She faced a backlash from presenter Piers Morgan after she said there was a difference between hiring sex from a minor and paedophilia. Oh dear, it's getting a little hot for a poo poo win and isn't it? Ah, oh, you got to feel nothing for him whatsoever, have you? <clears throat> Don't forget links to all these are in the description. BBC's worst nightmare. How to cancel your TV licence for good. The BBC will absolutely hate this video. Make no mistake about that. Their days are numbered and the BBC providers are all of the info you need to put an end to their protection racket once for, and for all. Together we can make the BBC's worst nightmare come true. It's the least we can do to pay them back for the untold miser misery they have inflicted on the UK population since TV licensing was first conceived of. The video, which is links in description too, uh, you need to go to the link for this. The video gives you the knowledge you need to successfully deal with BBC TV licensing once and for all. The more people who follow the advice on this video to avoid the TV license, the sooner we can put an end to the BBC's extortion racket. Because even if you don't want the services, they'll come round and try and enforce them on you, which is an extortion racket. Even if only one in ten of us cancelled our TV licence today, the BBC would lose 400 million over the next 12 months. <clears throat> they would then have to start thinking about alternative ways to fund their propaganda machine. Extorting money from every household in the UK may have been acceptable in the days when the TV broadcasting infrastructure had to be put in place, but today's world it, the licence fee is nothing more than dis decriminalised extortion. The licence fee rakes in £4 billion, that's billion with a B, each year for the BBC. But where does all the money go? A bunch of TV and radio channels and a website does not cost £4 billion per year. So you can bet that a large proportion of that money is finding its way into the pockets of some shady people at the BBC. The bottom line is this. No one in this country should be forced to buy something against their will, especially if they have no use for what they are being forced to buy. It is so unfair for the BBC to hire commission-hungry salespeople at Capita, one of the biggest corporations on the planet that have got their dirty little fingers into everything, 
who use fear and high-pressure sales tactics to scare the public into parting with their money. The BBC like to call these salespeople officers and to impose targets that compel them to sell 28 TV licences per week or face the sack. Imagine if the police operated in this way. They're not far off it. The prisons would be full of innocent and vulnerable people. It is also unfair that TV licence goons prey on the most vulnerable people. Imagine a non-TV licence pair who lives in a mansion surrounded by a large perimeter fence and gates at the entrance that prevent anyone from getting anywhere near their property. A TV licence goon wouldn't waste their time calling at such a property as they know they wouldn't stand a chance of being able to even speak to the occupier, let alone scream at them. It is far easier and more productive for the goon to prey on occupiers or men and women living in working class areas where there are many homes with front doors that are easily accessible. Therefore, it makes perfect sense to simply not engage with any TV license goon. The worst they can do is knock on your door every, every couple of months. Eventually, they'll give up calling altogether and go and prey on an easier target. As for TV license, threat letters, well, they can come in handy in the winter if you have a coal fire or a log burner. Shredded TVL letters can also provide a more comf comfy home for all sorts of house pets, or alternatively, make things out of paper mache. Can be an awesome way for people to express their cr creativity. Next crash will hit Europe much harder than financial crisis, m warns Moody's. Moody's sounded the alarm on global debt, which is on the course to hit 255 trillion by the end of 2019. Can someone tell me who the world owes 255 trillion to? Oh yes, that'd be the, the Vatican the Rothschilds. Yes, that'd be who? Yes, them thieving evil. Well, we know who they are and what they are. 18th November 2019. Europe will be stuck, struck by an even larger wave of debt defaults in the next downturn compared to the financial crisis after a surge in junk rated companies, Moody has predicted. The credit rating agency warned that the pr pr proportion of B3 rated companies, those graded as speculative quality, what has doubled in Europe over just three years. The deterioration means the res region will see a much larger number of downgrades and defaults during the next circular downturn compared with that crisis of 2008-2009, Moody said. Well, from what I've been watching so far and reading and researching, I would suggest that the next financial crash can happen any time from now till the latest, I would suspect, the end of uh, spring. That's the time scale that we've got before this next crash comes or before we all figure out what's really going on and lock up the crooks. Inside the legal cannabis oil laboratory in Stockport, one greater Manchester business which produces its own range of CBD oils is on a mission to educate consumers and is calling for more regulation in the st saturated market not more should be less more legislation just means more uh, licenses and of course these will only be working with it under license because you can't do anything unless you've got a license because slaves need a license to do everything it's a drug that people calm claim can treat everything from cancer to depression and anxiety well i disagree with that part because it's not a drug it's a natural plant given to us by the creator Cap cabin cannabinoidal cbd oil a legal and naturally occurring compound fat there you go they've admitted it there compound found in cannabis is said to offer health benefits that are both physical and mental so much so that one user is bold enough to say it has changed his life but are some online companies taking advantage of the global hype with wild claims and sustain and substandard ingredients? 
One Greater Manchester business, which produces its own range of CBD oils, is on a mission to educate consumers and is calling for more regulation in the saturated market. No, that means more statutes and acts. We don't need any. We should get rid of all statutes and acts, including the Sescovy Act of 1666. Alex Macmillan, 24, has teamed up with neuroscientist Dr Edward Jones, 27, and the pharmaceutical grade laboratories at NextGen 360 to create a CBD range named Dr Ed for their based in Stockport. <clears throat> Alex turning, turned to using the drug it's not a drug after struggling with anxiety for six years from the age of 18 oh and it worked did it he was prescribed medication from his gp and attended therapy sessions but it wasn't until he stumbled ac across cannabis oil online with its countless recommendations from dedicated facebook groups that he started to notice a difference links in the description if you want to read the rest <clears throat> now we all know that we are slaves to this corrupt government. And here's more evidence of it. Judge rules 14-year-old Jehovah Witness can have blood transfusions during cancer treatment after neither he or family could give consent due to beliefs. The mother and her father and her 14-year-old son said they'd respect the law and ju judge ruling. Teenage boy suffers with form of lymphatic cancer and needs blood transfusions. The teenager has also previously said he wanted to live and return to normal life. Well, the actual fact, Jehovah's Witnesses, um, there's only a space for 144 of you anyway, and there's more than that, so you ain't all getting there anyway, even if it was true. But, and I, I believe that it should take, uh, be allowed to take that uh, blood transfusions, but... It shouldn't take a judge to order that because that just is more control. A High Court judge has ruled that a 14-year-old Jehovah's Witness can undergo blood transfusions during cancer treatment despite his and his mother's objections. See, even if they object, it's going there. Mr Justice Roberts made the ruling after the youngest and his, his mother, who is also a Jehovah's Witness, said religious beliefs prevent them from agreeing to a blood transfusion. At a recent private hearing in the Family Division of the High Court in London, the judge concluded that the boy's life would pr properly, probably be at risk if he did not undergo transfusion. She said the teenager who has a form of lymphatic cancer could not be identified in medical reports of the case and she has not named the hospital trust, which asked her to decide whether transfusions would be in the boy's best interests. <clears throat> Now, of course, if we get rid of all the statutes and acts, that's the end of the courts, because courts can only deal with your fiction, your corporation. And when, if we get rid of the 1666 Sescovy Act, we're not corporations anymore. We're flesh and blood living men and women. And they can't deal with us. It's game over for the courts. The scum. 50 year of showbiz scoops. Right. The sun is 50. Oh, thankfully, it's going to be the end of it as well. Kate's first in the shower. Mm. Sex slave scandal escalates. Backers pull plug on Prince. Demand for quiz by the FBI. He's accused of using N-word. Crisis takes toll on Queen. Net closes on Andy. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Except, of course, they can't be prosecuted, even though they should be. Daily fail. Andrew out in the cold. Big business starts cutting ties with Andrew, or Prince Andrew, or Pedo Andrew. I think uh, that one will do. He's accused of racial slur. And now this his Epstein victim says paedophile tried to use Duke as law to Ireland. The Times. City back has abandoned Andrew. Ah, oh, shame. Prince's charity at risk as key sponsors pull out. Firms reconsider support amid Epstein concerns. Instantly, we were engulfed in tear gas. Um, Hong Kong, that is. 
NHS to pay tax bills. Statins help memory. I wouldn't go near him if I were you. Johnson backs Javid. Another bunch of crook bastards. Bloomberg apology. Accountant cuts pay. Spurs eye successor. <clears throat> Express. Life will mean life for child killers. What about child rapists? Should life mean life for them as well? Of course it should. Elton John, how I was 24 hours from snuffing it. Duke regrets failing to show sympathy for Epstein victims. Queen backs Prince Andrew's despite backlash. Well, she is her favorite pedophile. Sheer joy, Kate looks ace in lace. So, pedophile, parasite, they're all in that paper. Mirror. Boris donors and their billions. Ian Wright, secret family heartache. Real scandal exclusive. Andrew's accusers, accuser films BBC interview. Palace brace for more bombshells in panorama probe. Yeah, if it ever is allowed to hear, which I strongly doubt it will be. The Guardian. Andrew, the rise and fall of a party prince, paedophile, I should say. Marina Hyde, Will Johnson's friend become his most dangerous rival? Yeah, what a load of smoke and mirror bullshit. Staffing crisis putting safety of patients at risk, warn NHS chiefs. So they've said if you give us more money, we'll increase our wages. Not give any to the nurses or hire any more nurses or, or doctors or anything like that, but we'll be better off. There is real concern among NHS leaders as winter approaches. <clears throat> Anger, as US says, Israel settlements not illegal. Every single one of them is illegal and unlawful. Hong Kong surrender is your only option. Please tell protesters. Aye. Duke sideline. Charles plans to limit Andy's duties. Keep him out of the uh, thing where he can get, maybe get arrested. My near miss. Now your body trusts your instincts. Now your body, right. I'm late convert to International Men's Day. Michael Chuck. Oh, Election ignites. No, it doesn't. If anyone's still voting, they want brains examining. Battle for 10 Downing Street starts tonight with first debate between Johnson and Corbyn. Pressure on Labour leader to use television showdown to boost poll ratings. Lib Dem and SNP fury as judge, judges rule debate can go ahead without them. Not a shock. War crime claims. Another dismissal chapter from Britain's war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Metro. Will Duke have to face US courts? Hmm. It'd be nice, but I doubt it. Victim's lawyers want to speak to him and he could be extradited. Well, is that after we extradite that woman back here? The one that actually murdered someone, although I'm, I'm fairly sure he's a murderer as well and a rape child rapist, but, you know. 44 years for Jody killers. Waste of paper. It's that jungle shit. I quit, but I wish I'd got with Kev's before leaving. World's gone mad too. Bants R.I.P. Snowflakes kill off bloke jokes in the workplace. That paper is just utter, utter. I mean, they're all drivel, but that is by far the worst. Hong Kong rule of law on trial. It's not rule. They've always been a dictatorship, just like they're trying to bring in in this country. Johnson's Shelves Corporation Tax Court. Tories proposed drop to 17% delayed until after the, it get, if they get in and then they'll bring it back and then they'll tax the rest of us. Six billion feed up for spending. Freed up. Oh, well, if six billion's freed up, then we can end homelessness and end poverty, can't we? Oh, no, it's not for that. Corbyn defends higher rate. Airbnb limbers up for IPO by signing 500 million Olympic sponsorship deal. 
My girlfriend says I'm tight. So to prove her wrong, we went out for some tea and biscuits. It was quite exciting, as she's never given blood before. Paddy, I've been dating twins recently. Mick, really? And how can you tell them apart, Paddy? It's easy. Julie's got blonde hair and Derek's got a moustache. Day 266 and still no tomatoes.